Hey guys, and welcome back to another Raspberry Pi video. Now in today's video, what I'm gonna be doing is showing you how to stream data using Python sockets. So purely with Python code, there's nothing else that we need to install on our Raspberry Pi. All we need to do is just use this Python code that I'm gonna give you guys. So you can view live image data from any machine that you want. Um, and it doesn't obviously have to be that Raspberry Pi itself, because let's be honest, what's the point of just having our Raspberry Pi camera if we can't view it from anywhere else? So to do this, what you're going to do is first of all, just download the code that I have in the description. Now this code is written by Raspberry Pi. I've done some slight modifications to it to make it work a little bit better. But other than that, just download that code and it's going to have what's known as a server script and a client script. Now, before I move too far, let me show you guys how this works. so You can get an idea of what we're about to do. So I'm just going to run the server script here, which is actually on the machine that's going to be accepting the image data. And then on my Raspberry Pi here, I'm going to run the client script and wait for that to load for one second. And now if we just give this client and server a second to connect, you can see that we're seeing this live image data from our Raspberry Pi. Now it's delayed about a second and you can see that it's pretty slow in the FPS, but I'm going to talk about why and how you might speed that up and all of that fun stuff in just a second. So I don't want to run this anymore. So I'm just going to go to tools, cancel build. And now let's talk about how to set this up. So first of all, we want, we want to get on the machine that we're going to be accepting the image data from. So whatever computer this is, and you're going to put the server.py script on it. Now what we're going to do is first of all, just modify the script a little bit to work for your computer. So what we're going to do is install some Python packages and then figure out what IP address we're going to use for this server. So we're going to t start by doing pip install and now uh, pillow. And the reason I'm doing this is because I need to install some Python modules that will allow this script to run. And the two modules we need are pillow and matplotlib. Now, if you already have these installed, go ahead and move forward, but you probably don't. So go ahead and run this command in your command prompt. This stands for package installer Python, I believe, or Python installer packages, something like that, and hit enter. Uh, if I do that, now I already have this satisfied, so it's not going to do anything. But for you guys, you should see a little loading bar and it should install that. Now, after this, we're going to do pip install matplotlib, and this is what we're going to use to actually view the image. Now, you can view the image however you'd like. For me, I found matplotlib was just the easiest, so that's what I'm going to use. Now, once you've done that, you should be good to go. If you're having issues with your pip and you're getting pip as an unrecognized command, I'm going to leave a card to a video in the top right-hand corner right now that's going to show you how to install pip. Now, I know it's going to look like the wrong video because it talks about Pygame, but watch through that video and it shows you how to fix your pip. Now, after you've done that, we're going to type ipconfig in our console here in our command prompt, and it should pop up something that looks like this. Now, what we're looking for here is our IPv4 address. Now, this is the address, or you might have an IPv6 one as well. It should look something like this, 192.168.1.159, um, except this 159 will be different depending on what computer you're on. You might also have one that looks like 10.10. something. What we're going to do is just copy this address and we're going to use this as our server address. Now, this is if we're going to be working on our local network, which means that your Raspberry Pi is on the same network as your computer that's trying to connect to it. Now, if you're not working on your local network, what you're going to do is go to the Internet and you're going to search my IP like that, like my public IP, whatever it is. And you're going to take that value and you're going to use that for the rest of the tutorial. I'm not going to search this because I don't want to get DDoS by you guys, but go ahead, search my IP address. It'll give it to you. And then that way you can use that as a server address. So you can see that mine's already punched in here, but right here, we're just going to put in the server address. So where it says server socket dot bind, and that's all we need to do from this computer. Now time to go over to the raspberry Pi. So let's load that up now. So on the raspberry Pi, we are going to need this, um, what do you call it? This client script that we've downloaded as well. So find some way to get it over to the Raspberry Pi, however you need to do that. And what you're going to paste that same address that you put on the server script into here. Now, if you're on your local network, again, it should be something like this. So 192 or like a 10.10 or something like that. If you're on your uh, just like internet in general, not local network, then it's going to be some arbitrary uh, number, right? So now that we've done that, it's actually time to start streaming the data. It's as easy as that. I'll go through how the script works in a second. But what you're going to want to do is go to your main computer. So one that's going to be accepting the images and run the script. Now to do this, um, you're going to whatever editor you're using, just run the script. So for me, it's control B, 
gonna wait a second and you shouldn't see any output because we haven't yet connected the Raspberry Pi. So this is gonna wait for a connection and just be running in the background idle until eventually we connect. So if we go to our Raspberry Pi now and we run this client script, so I'm just gonna click F5 to do this. Now you should see in about a few seconds, it connects and it's ready to go. So now you can see we're getting some output that says image is verified, which essentially is just telling us that this image is actually working and we're getting it through. And then we can see our live feed like this. Now I'm gonna go through the script and explain to you how it works so you get an idea of how you can modify it and play with it by yourself. But that's all you need to do to view the live feed. And the great thing with this is all your image data is coming in through Python code, which means you can draw things on it, you can add things to it, you can turn it around, you can do whatever you want with it rather than getting a live feed from some other kind of, you know, area, right? So what I'm going to do essentially is just walk you guys through this. So this first part here is setting up what's known as the socket. Now a socket is how incoming connections are going to connect to this machine and essentially what's going to happen and you need either you need to be on some kind of network obviously for this to work is going to set up a port that's looking for connections and then the other script that we have is going to connect to that now once we accept a connection we're going to create a file object um, that's readable which means we are going to look for a file and read it and the other script is actually going to write to a file now what we're going to do here is just run a while loop that's going to constantly grab information from this file and that information is going to be our binary image data. So what we're going to do is use this, which we're going to use a struct. I'm not going to talk about how this works to essentially unpack our information and take it into our code. We're going to make sure that we're actually getting image data and if we're not, so if not image data, we're going to break and get out of this while loop. We're going to turn this into uh, bytes IO, which is just kind of like a streaming thing. Uh, we're going to write uh, to this bytes IO, which is like a streaming thing, um, the stuff that we read from our connection. Then what we're going to do is we're going to seek the beginning of this stream, which is this bytes IO stream. Again, I'm not going to talk about this stuff too much. We're going to open up the image that's there. And then what we're going to do is try to display this image using matplotlib. And that's what this part does right here. Now, after this, we're just printing out to make sure that our image is indeed working. And then finally, so if we break out of this loop or something goes wrong in this try statement, we're just gonna close the connection and close the server. And that's how easy this server script is. Now, now over to our Raspberry Pi. So if we go to our Raspberry Pi and I'm just gonna make this full screen like that, we'll read through this script. Now, we're just gonna import all the stuff at the beginning, similar as to before, we're gonna set up a socket and we're going to set up the connection. So again, using our IP address and port 8000, that's just a default port, you can change that if you'd like. And now we're gonna create a file object on our uh, socket essentially, but instead of reading, we are going to write to it. And that's what WB stands for. I believe that stands for write bytes. Now what we're gonna do is try to open up our Pi camera and this is where you're gonna set up your resolution and if you need to flip the camera, which I've done using a vertical flip, you can set your resolution right here. So I have mine at 500 by 480. Now notice that the smaller your resolution, uh, the faster your image is gonna come in. So if you try to set this at 1080p, it's gonna take a lot longer to stream this image data to the other computer because it's essentially sending eight times the bytes, at least, I'm pretty sure that's what it works out to if you go to 1080p from this or something like that. So anyways, the smaller your resolution, the faster the image you get, but obviously the lowest quality. Now down here, what we're going to do is actually just set up a timer. And while we're doing this is because we're only going to run the stream for 60 seconds. Now, if you don't want to run the stream um, for a limited amount of time, which is what I'm doing, you can simply remove this line of code right here, which says if time dot time minus start is greater than 60. And essentially what this is doing is checking to see if the stream has been running for over 60 seconds. If it does, it just closes it. I just have that there to make sure I don't have like the stream infinitely going. But again, you guys can remove that if you like and change that to be whatever time you want. Now in here, what we're doing is simply writing to a file object, which is a bytes stream. I'm not going to talk about how that really works using the uh, continuous capture from our camera. And then we're just kind of doing some stuff with the stream here, writing it to the connection. And then again, here, if we get any issues, we're going to close the connection and close the socket. 
And that is essentially how this works. So this is a cool way to stream image data. I know that it's not super fast FPS, but it's really useful because you get the actual image in Python code, which is what a lot of other tutorials don't show you how to do. Again, most of this code is right from the Raspberry Pi documentation. I've just modified it slightly, like only a few lines really, and just kind of walked you guys through it so you understand how this works. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you can start streaming your Raspberry Pi camera information. And I'd be interested to know what you guys are doing with this. So let me know in the comment down below.